In this live martial arts class, as if you're stuck at home because of the quarantine or maybe you're part of the second shutdown wherever you are, which is really unfortunate, but I'm not gonna throw my opinion out there. I don't wanna get banned. Speaking of that, if you go to pasquinelli.com and sign up for the newsletter or send me an email, we can make sure that if for whatever reason, I lose my common sense and I start talking politics or something and they ban me, then we can still be connected. But I'm gonna to try to keep it to myself. No one wants to hear everybody else's opinion anyway. All right, so you're just turning this back and forth. I'm using the rattan staff. That's the lighter weight staff. And just because I have some things going on in my hands today, I'm stretching them out. But you can start with rattan if you have rattan. If you have the oak, use the oak. If you're using a broomstick, use a broomstick. Doesn't matter, but do this warm up move side to side and then go from one hand to the other hand. This is just how you get started. You want to start the same way almost every time and then vary your workout. So the variation comes in the workout so you don't hit plateaus, you keep growing, you keep moving. Bamboo stick is perfect. This is rattan, which is also a grass, bamboo's a grass. Bamboo's a little bit more rigid. And this one, you'll see, right, move it, there's a lot of flexibility. You can also fight very fast, hit hard with this staff. It's good for every, just about everything but it's different if you're using, let me show you my other staff I like to use. Some of my older videos, people ask me, is that rattan? Because it's white, and I have a white oak staff over there. But that's the oak staff, there's no shaking, right? You can also fight. This is gonna hit a lot harder, it's a lot heavier. You're gonna build the strength in your wrists. But one's not better than the other one, they're just different. This is more of the Japanese style. This is gonna build a lot of power in your grip and your forearm. And the other one, which I might switch back to in a second, is just the Chinese style, more Korean style. So it's floppy, it moves, it does some cool things that this one won't, but it's not gonna hit as hard. It'll hit faster though, because it's a lighter weight. Now, we've been working on this overhand spin called the butterfly spin. This is your right hand. You're gonna turn your right hand all the way, palm up. The left hand just slides under, palm to the back of the hand, and that thumb comes over. You can see how the thumbs cross, and the fingers make, that. there's your butterfly. The wings of the butterfly, that's why they call that the butterfly spin. And then the top hand pulls out of the way. The bottom hand turns as far as it can. The top hand comes back in, thumb down, thumb the pinky, takes it, turns. And my elbows are out because the camera is high. I wanted you to see it. Your elbows don't. Your elbows are better if they're here, in close to the body, so you can isolate the move. But I want you to see. That was just a quick note about that. Once this turns in, my hand comes back over, takes it, and now the bottom hand has to pull in out of the way, and slow as smooth, smooth as fast is ex especially true while you're learning how to do your butterfly spin. Now, before I stop on this butterfly spin, I wanna show you that if I turn it back the other way, it's the same move, just done in reverse, and then I can go back in one direction. So that's your challenge for today. That's how you vary, that's how you're gonna grow in your training. Go in one direction, bring it to a stop, and go back the other way, and then switch which hand is on top. And now on this hand, go into your butterfly spin. So that's four different moves, two directions, and two different hand positions. One hand on top, stop it, and bring it back. If you haven't done this yet, try this one today. This is gonna get you very strong. And if you need a staff, check the link below because I have a, a bow staff store on there. Click bow staff store. And then you'll see the rattan, the white, uh, white ash tapered, non-tapered. On the front page though, before you get to the bow staff store, you'll see this particular staff. This is a very inexpensive, inexpensive option. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter. It's a very strong heft. It's not gonna break. Yes, I'm well, George. It's so great to see you. I'm 
glad you've been busy. Busy is good. You're going to be able to hit hard, defend yourself, block through all the motions you need with this one. And if you want to start with two, my suggestion is super lightweight, really flexible. And that's a, one of the coolest moves is this. This is a blocking move. If you're coming into me, I can block this way. I can block this way. I can also smash down on the hand. I can slide it in, pop it up under the chin, bring it through, bring it down, twist fast, all because it's lightweight. You can do the same thing with that one, but this one's gonna move a little bit faster. So you, you get, it, but one's not good, one's not bad, they're different. Uh, that's gonna hit harder. That's less likely to break. Best self-defense staff right there. Best demo staff right here because you can now start to move fast, do all these tricks, and yeah, good. Bamboo is great too because it's, it's really strong, but it's not as flexible, and it's more likely to break if you start to hit it really hard. Bamboo is great though. Bamboo is a very hard, durable wood. But with these, these two options are on the store. If you look at the link below, you pick up speed. And speed is fun and it's lightweight. So when you first start, especially if you want to learn tricks with your bow staff, spins and tricks and spins are not for fighting this strike strike push block those are all fighting moves that's for combat bow that's for self-defense spinning is cross training spinning is fun but it's also a way to increase your cardiovascular fitness because you move faster you start to go into flow start to learn about timing and distance all with a lighter staff. So again, my suggestion is, because one's not better than the other, it depends on what your purpose is. Self-defense, hardwood bow. That one's uh, red oak. This one, oh, well, let me show you, because this that, that brings up a quick point. This is the best of both worlds. Good, thanks for coming, thanks for being here a long time. This is white oak. This is extremely strong. You see, there's no flex. This is actually my favorite. I've had this one for close to 30 years now. It's light, it's a little heavier than rattan, but it's also extremely effective for fighting. You can do all the moves of both staffs with this one, but this one is more of an investment. And my suggestion is before you invest a lot of money, invest a lot of time, learn what it is you really like about each one. Um, well, there, it's, it's like, you can see there's a lot of limitations. It's like, uh, uh, what, what is it called? Uh, nunchucks, right? You can, you can do two nunchucks at the same time, a spam pump. You can change hand positions, you can change timing so that one's moving at a different rate than the other one, but there's not a lot you can do. You're not gonna be able to fight with two staffs, unless it's for a movie or a demonstration, unless the other person who you're fighting with is allowing you to do the moves that you want to move, uh, you want to do. Fighting with two swords, similar, but a little bit more effective. Fighting with two collie sticks, that now becomes extremely effective. Now you're fighting with two, but if you could fight with a collie stick and a knife, now it's even more, you become more deadly because now one of them is really going to end the fight. Anyway. I'll make a video on that, on what you can do with two uh, bow staffs at the same time. Um, and and uh, what's her name? There's a YouTuber on here. She's more of a baton twirler, or I guess they don't twirl, I think she said baton athlete, high ranking, uh, Michelle Smith. She's also a, a, an accomplished stunt woman, a great martial artist. She'll show you how to use two staffs better than I ever could. Go check out her channel if you haven't seen it. It's Michelle Krista Smith. That's what it is. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> good. I, this morning I was washing my hair and I found a few lumps and that was from this week with that one right there. All right, I'm gonna lower it a little bit. I now have my white oak. Yeah, I grabbed it with my hand and I thought I'm not putting it down. I like this thing so much. All right, I wanna show you, we did this butterfly spin I want to show you one more time before we leave it because I know 
you've been struggling with this. And notice that my hands are still, my wrists are still in contact. Don't take your wrist apart. You can do this. You have a lot less control. See how my elbows have to flare? I don't like the elbows to flare. I like the elbows to be tight. Oh, just added a move. I like the elbows to be tight. And I like my hands to struggle and fight to learn how to move in space and time. Because when I do go for self-defense, and I am fighting to defend myself, I don't want to drop the staff ever. So the more I can challenge myself in my training, the more you challenge yourself in your training, the less likely you are to drop your staff when you need it for self-defense. And again, you're not going to be twirling, you're not going to be spinning, you're going to be fighting, making these basic moves. But having said that though, I want you to learn a lot of spins today. Let's go into a wrist roll. And this is my left hand. You can do it right or left, never matters. Turn it up. It never matters because you're going to do both hands equally and evenly. You're going to become so ambidextrous. And what's really happening in your brain is all of this, this uh, cross body stuff, all these both hands moving is going to give you mental abilities to problem solve faster, do math in your head faster and longer, be able to focus longer, be more flexible, more durable in your brain. It's going to make you super smart because you're challenging your body and your brain lives in your body. It's the body-mind principle of yin-yang, or umyang, as the Koreans say. But you're just going to up to one side, open that hand, let it balance. Turn the hand to catch it. Bring it the other way, open the hand, turn to catch it. So I'm going to go really super slow-mo, old-fashioned way. Right, open. Grab it. And then when you get it, speed it up. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, and don't stay slow forever. Once you get a basic move down, now go fast enough that you start to drop it again out of your comfort zone, and that's where you grow. You grow outside of your comfort zone. You'll never grow in it. If you do, you'll be a two-foot-tall tree, right? You want to open that. I want you to be a tall oak or a big sangmu, a big uh, pine tree. Sangmu sa was the old brand. I used to love that brand. I think they're still around. Anyway, you open martial arts brain. I digress. I'm getting excited thinking about this staff. All the t the years that I'll be in it. Yeah, it is. It is hard to spin in your room, without a doubt. So maybe you have two staffs. You have a stick and a staff, and your stick is maybe that shorter stick, or an old staff that you cut a couple of feet off of, and you can still spin. Let me show you what I mean. There it is, it's a $5, $4.99 dowel rod. See how short it is? From the local hardware store. Now I can do all of my training in my bedroom or inside the house if they lock us down again. Maybe you're already locked down. Maybe you're in one of those cities here in the United States where they shut everything down or you're in Europe shutting everything down again. And you can do all your spins, you can do this. It's lighter though, that's why it goes flying out of your hand. But that's good, because now you can challenge your hand to move faster so that when it does fall out of your hand, you start to grow. This is good training for me. I'm just identified where my weakness is, right? My hand's not moving fast enough to catch this lighter staff. So now I have an opportunity. <laughs> I bet you have. I know exactly what you're talking about. We looked at the ceiling here, I can see it. All the little digs and dings. But my point is, don't let anything stop you. Find a way or make a way. A short stick, cut the head off the broom, and now you have a way, right? All right, so this is the next move. After you do your, your wrist roll on one hand, good morning, it's good to see you. And then your wrist roll on the other hand, start to put them together. One hand, take it in the other one. Work on passing the hand. Now, when we started, we were doing this. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that you can do. Moving the stuff. But sometimes if that's not an option, find another way. This is the warm-up move. Now, I'm going to do that, but add a wrist roll. I'm going to bring it back. 
at a wrist roll. So the wrist roll is coming to the outside of the pinky side of the hand. And then from here, yes, it will be. Once I put these on here, I, I, I just let them live forever. Maybe someday I'll go through and retitle them and clean them up. And I think uh, YouTube sometimes puts way too many ads in those. And I can control it, but I have to do it manually. And I don't always have time right now. So if you've ever watched one of my videos and you're rolling your eyes thinking, oh man, what about all these ads? I'll fix that eventually. I just don't have time. I don't like it either. One side to the other side. Someone asked me yesterday, what about the Patreon link that's in there? Is that a, just a gimmick from YouTube? And no, that's an alternative. They actually take a small percentage. Someone asked me to set that up and I, I really appreciate the Patreon. Patreons and um, Super Chats. Those are the two best sources of income. Or if you go and you buy something from the store, the link below, that really helps me out a lot too. So, and, and even if you don't, I appreciate you just being here. All right, now I'm doing the wrist rolls. I want you to go into a one-handed spin with your bow, put, put in your right hand, your right foot's in front of your body. See how that makes my body more, uh, more narrow. I'm a very wide person. You can spin from side to side like this. This is correct, but this is faster. When you pull one foot back, this is a better way to fight. This allows you to fight from behind your weapon. Now you're not gonna spin when you fight, but that's gonna be the basic principle when you bring your other hand on and you start to defend yourself. So you're here, one side, the other side, just side to side, gradually increasing your speed. The key is squeeze your abdominal muscles tightly, breathe through your nose, stomach up and in, abs tight, and then faster. Faster, put it into the other hand, and that's just how you do that. You just transfer the same way that we always do, and then same thing, side to side. The reason this staff, which is white oak, is lighter than that heavy red oak staff behind me is mostly that diameter. That's a, um, a 3 4 inch diameter. The other one is a full half an inch thicker. That one back there. So it's just more wood. It has to be heavier. This hand is up, stomach up and in, and then start to go from one hand to the other hand. Here's the key to the pass. This is how we warmed up. You know how to do this. When you bring it to the opposite side of the body, left hand to the right side, opposite side, take it behind. So the left hand again, take it behind the left. Go into this side, take that hand behind, and then start to switch your feet. I like it best when you start to step forward and back, and I always forget to do this. I'm gonna face away from the camera to the side so that you can see me moving. I don't have to hit the camera and break it again. If you could see how much tape is on my tripod, just keeping it together, because I've hit it so many times, you would laugh like I laugh every time I look at it. I wonder how much more tape and glue can I put on that thing to keep it still useful. That's how I am. I don't like throwing things away if I can fix it. Especially now. We've got too much stuff in the landfills. Just keep it out. Now what's happening is your heart rate is raising up. It's getting higher, it's getting faster. You're starting to break a sweat. You're starting to lean your body out and get fighting fit. Then I want you to reverse everything. So I'm gonna use my left hand first. I'm just left-handed at my natural starting point. Left foot forward. And I'm gonna pull up and out. Now let me show you the opposite. Let me show you forward. This is forward. And reverse is pulling up and out let me show you a little bit closer now, now would be a great time if you have a comment because when i'm back there i just can't see with these old old person eyes i don't know how i got old person eyes that's a forward figure eight sideways also known as the infinity spin and i imagine carving it with my thumb and that's how i keep it going forward and then when i reverse it this is what i want you to do imagine carving it backward with the pinky so when you're pulling it up you're pulling it up. Let me show you the Vulcan real quick. Next time I need to put the big bucket of weapons. Let me show you what it looks like. The, the, school, the school's a little messy today because the kids are out of school. So we're having a fun recess day. A big bucket of weapons in the back. Um, 
we had a tropical storm and it knocked out the power to the school or something. The boat, I, I, people keep asking me, can you show the boat, can you show the boat? And I know I have one or two videos here. I'm working on, I want to show you, because I want you to learn how to use the Boken in the way that's best for you. But this is the Boken, just the wooden sword. Now, it's not a fake sword, it's a practice sword. It's not metal, it's wood, right? And it's that same wood as the red oak staff, so it's red oak. From here, if I'm attacking and slicing down, right? This would be slicing down. Slicing, slicing across, slicing down. Those are all forward spins with your bow staff. So that's forward, uh, coming back, forward, 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 forward. So imagine when you're spinning forward, that's your slicing, 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 slicing. Then, if you were to reverse that, and you would slice up, and this is the opposite, slicing up, slicing up. And there's some really cool things that you do just with the boken where you can change positions. But these are more, these are also attacks, but they're also deflecting. If this is the other person's sword, by bringing it up, it smacks it out of the way, and then you come back down and slice it through the middle for self-defense, right? Or if you lived in feudal Japan 150 years ago, but you bring it, probably more than that now, but that, that's that turning, blocking up. So when you're pulling backward, yeah, I hope everybody's doing great too. We, we really live in an amazing world and amazing times, and it can feel like there's a lot of negative stuff going on, and there is, but there's always more good than bad. And there's way more good on this channel. So we're pulling up. So what I wanted you to imagine was when you're going forward, you're attacking down, slicing down, and then when you reverse it, these are your deflecting strikes coming up. Especially if you ever aspire to be Darth Maul. I know as some of you do, right? Think, think of when you do those spins coming forward, you're attacking, attacking, but then they're attacking with the sword or the lightsaber or whatever, and you have your double blade lightsaber, and you're pulling, pulling up. Those are all knocking their sword out of the way, and then you change the position, and then there's your attack. All right, so we have forward spins, changing hands. Now I want you to reverse the spin. Let me turn to the side, and it's just like before, walking backward, walking forward, and the change comes on the same side, not the opposite this time, and in front of the other hand. From here, in front of, you're starting to pick up the heart rate again. You can add a little jog. I always add a little jog, because I really, I don't, I don't want to have to go spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes on a bicycle in the gym. I want this to be my cardio. I want to be able to maximize all of the training and move as fast as I can and get that heart rate up and learn some new techniques. And I do that by adding this stuff together. All right, yeah, and that, that's the other reason I do it. <laughs> because it looks so cool. So what I want you to do now is start in this forward spin before we go away from these figure eights or these infinity spins. Infinity because it carves the infinity sign and it never stops. It's endless, endless spin. From here, turn around 180 degrees facing the other direction. And what's gonna happen, if there's not a big uh, balloon bag behind you, what's gonna happen is the spin is going to reverse directions. Watch me going this way. So this is forward spin. I simply turn my feet around backward and now it's in the back spin. Same is true if I turn back around I go from reverse to forward. And if I started forward, I go in reverse. But every time you change, by simply turning around, there's nothing that you have to think about except keep moving, keep spinning, forward and reverse. Forward. And this also works if you have that small staff. Put that back over here. You're in the bedroom. You don't have much room. Now, close your eyes if you have to because I'm moving the camera. Anytime I move the camera down, you get a little nauseous, or I do anyway. I'm gonna show you my feet. If you're in your bedroom, you don't have, or your living room or whatever, you can do all of it. So these, these mats come in squares, two feet by two feet. You can do all of it two feet by two feet, right? 
So you start walking forward, turn around. You can jog in place, you can run in place. You can move forward, move backward. And it's just one or two steps at a time. One or two steps at a time. That's, and that's all it has to be. There's nothing fancy. And you can get your heart rate up. Just moving forward and backward. All right, we're coming back up. Take a deep breath. Don't get nauseous. All right, so that just answered that question about your feet. What do your feet do? Don't think about it. Your feet know what to do. They just move you forward. You're in a small little space. Just keep turning around until you get dizzy. Take a couple steps, take a couple steps back. Turn a couple steps forward, a couple steps back. If you are stuck in your house, if you have the park, you're out in a rural area, you don't care who, who thinks of what in your neighborhood, and you go for a walk or a jog down the street, right? Use this whole space to your advantage. There's no way to do it wrong as long as you're doing it, getting it done. Then put it in one hand, go behind your back and bring it out. Go behind your back and bring it out. There's nothing fancy back there. You're gonna see when I turn around, I'm just grabbing under. When it's perpendicular to the ground, like a tree growing up, I grab it under the other hand, pull it out. Doesn't matter which hand it starts in, bring it out. Bring it back. One, two, one. Then bring it straight up. I'll give you some perspective here. I don't know if you saw the ceiling just now. You saw all those marks up there. The key is my arm is straight. When your arm bends, hold on, I'm moving the camera up. When I use the Facebook portal, I never have to do this because it zooms in wherever I want it to. Um, but I don't have that on this iPhone. When your arm is bent, and this is almost, something almost everybody does at the beginning when they start to go over their head. And it's something about the way our brains work and we're trying to picture it and see it in our mind's eye. And you bring it right in. And that's when you whack yourself in the head. I don't know if you can hear that, right? That's what it sounds like. Only louder because it's in your head. If your hand is straight, it's almost impossible to do that. As long as your knuckles are facing the sky, it has to be there. The second time you're hitting yourself in the head is when you go behind your back, right? There it is, right there. When you start to turn too quickly behind your back, I'm gonna show you what that means. Over your head first, go back to our warm up move side to side, that's exactly the same as this. You know this one, you just bring your arms straight, no bend in the elbow when it holds the staff, no bend. You bend the elbow, you're hitting your head, plus it's just wrong. From here, you go to the side and straight down. It will not turn again until it comes up behind your back. If you do it that way, you're not going to get smacked in the back of your head. This is so funny. Uh, say it again, it's Doggo Demon or something. Young people love shout outs. You need more self-confidence and more self-esteem. Hopefully you're gonna get that as you grow older. If you don't, let me tell you, you're valuable just as you are. You don't need anybody else saying your name. Thank you. Oh, uh, Naj, I love that. Thank you so much, that really helps me a lot. The money, the money is very helpful. I appreciate that so much. But more importantly, your comment that you've learned a lot. That's why I'm doing it. The money, the money's not enough. Honestly, and it's not, it's not that I don't appreciate the money because I do. It keeps the lights on. But I do this because of what I got out of it as a kid. I got the gift of martial arts, and I want you to get the gift of martial arts. And I don't care if you can pay me. If you can pay me, that's awesome. That pays for the lights, pays for the electricity, pays for the rent. But if you can't, and sometimes it puts food on the table, and that's a true story. But if you can't, then I still appreciate it either way. An eager student is payment enough. Straight arm, the turn happens overhead, straight elbow, straight elbow, straight elbow, straight elbow. Now turn. 
If you wait to turn until here, you're not going to hit your head. If you start to turn here, which is where almost everybody does it, they, they, in the turn they have to bend their elbow. There it is. Bam. I'm trying to get it. Can't see it as well. There it is. That's when you hit yourself in the head. Those two times, overhead, the elbow's bent, behind the back, turning too soon if the elbow's bent. So practice this with me. Start up, drop, straight, 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 turn. Straight, 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 turn. The only two times you're gonna turn is overhead and behind your back. And watch what's happening to my flexibility here. See how far back my arm is? Your arm is gonna get that flexible. Your shoulders are gonna get that flexible. And a lot of you have told me recently still, or in fact recently, how much less pain you have in your shoulders and how much stronger you are in your shoulders, how much more flexibility and mobility, endurance, strength you're getting in your shoulders from overhead and behind the back. And it's as simple as straight up, turn, straight back, up, back, up, back. Yes, Salambam, Tamil, um, two hands, a thinner, Staff, less diameter, more speed. Also found in, uh, what's the, uh, uh, the Gurkhas, the famous uh, soldiers from India. Tough as nails, tougher than nails. Fought with the British. They also, it's a Gakti. They also use, uh, similar to the Tamil style, or Tamil, however you say that. I'm sure you can tell me. Two hands. And, and, and you see that much more. These are all beginner, beginner through advanced. If you do them really well, you're advanced. If you do them, all, if you do them every day for five minutes, 30 seconds per move, you have two hands, that's a minute per hand. Just pick five moves, do it every day. You'll be doing beginner moves in an advanced way. And that's really what martial arts is. Think, think about, uh, and then when you learn like really tricky stuff, tricky stuff comes easier. All right, I wanna show you how to get healthier hands. You're going to do three things to improve hand, to, uh, get rid of the tendonitis, hand health. The first one is pulling on your thumb. This is inside your workout. Toward the end, start to do this. Take about 30 seconds per hand. Just pull, pull and shake. This is going to increase your flexibility, your strength, your hand health. This is also good for your body health. If you look at um, Korean hand acupuncture, especially the suji chin, they do a lot of, they use the hand instead of the feet. They use the feet too, but reflexology. This is a reflexology that's gonna help you with circulation and overall general health, according to that philosophy. I'm not a doctor. All right, then the other fingers. But what really is happening is you're getting blood in there, the plasma starts to heal everything, you get better lubrication, you get better strength, better flexibility, mobility, and this is going to get you stronger. You're welcome. It's definitely my pleasure. But add this to your workout. If you've been doing this for a while, you need to start keeping your hands healthy and strong. And it's not just the hands. It's all the uh, extensors and flexors and all the tendons and all the muscles that go up into the elbow. When you get that tendonitis or you get some bursas, that's the little fluid sacs. I got one right here. That's, I, have, I had it here and it shifted to here. And the funny thing is it has nothing to do with the staff. It's, it's the Rubik's Cube. I mean, going faster and faster on the Rubik's Cube to solve it and teach other people how to solve it. And so I've been, I do the trigger here and I do the thumb here and I rotate and that's all from the Rubik's Cube. But the staff helps it so much. All right, that's the first one. The second, second one, take your hand, your other hand, and pull your fingers down a little. Don't overdo it at first until you know where your flexibility is. Then straighten that elbow and let this come back more and more and more. Hold that for 30 seconds. Go to that other hand. Same thing, you're just putting your fingers down. The other hand takes them gently, straighten the elbow gently, hold and breathe. Now you might not have this kind of flexibility, you might be a lot more flexible, but it doesn't matter. Go with where you are, start where you are. Third one, three, super great hand strength and speed and health are the finger rolls. And I want you to go through the fingers. And if you say to me, that's really hard, my fingers are not that flexible, say yet. They're not that flexible yet. They're not that strong yet. That's okay. Use the other hand. Here's that super slow-mo, old-fashioned way again. Just turning. This, this hand is really important because it's helping me get through 
and teach my fingers what they're supposed to do first. Once you get it, then keep it going. Good. It's, it's better than playing with other things, right? Since you're five. I mean like matches, fire, that kind of stuff. You get your mind out of the gutter. All right, going through, through. And you're just sliding it through. And then once you get it, and you might not be there yet, but be patient with yourself. Wherever you are, that's where you are, and there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean you have to stay there either. Be grateful that you woke up this morning. And then say, I'm so grateful I woke up this morning, and I'm going to get stronger because I'm going to do this. I'm going to spin the staff through my fingers. I'm so happy that I can still breathe and see and hear and think if those are true for you. And then say, and I'm going to do this other stuff. But start from gratitude. Then go to a three-finger roll. And the reason for the three-finger roll is you're going to start to put in your wrist rolls, wrist rolls. You can do wrist rolls in both directions with your figure eight spin and going backward. You can do wrist rolls going both forward and backward. And then you're going to add in finger rolls when you start to do your freestyle or your flow. And the purpose of freestyle flow is to learn space, timing, distance and you're gonna mix it up. Plus, it's really cool. Um, start here, fingers open. Starts the same way as the continuous finger roll, and when you get to the pinky and the ring finger, and it's called the ring finger because of that, pinky and ring finger, it goes over the back of the first three fingers, and the thumb comes up to take it, and then keeps it going. So from here, or your hand closes, and you go into a different move. But the purpose of the three finger roll is it's a transition move. It's a cool way to go from one move to another move and either change the timing or the rhythm or both. Plus it's cool. Plus it gives your hands great health so you don't get those pain in your forearm and your elbow. You don't get the tendonitis or the carpal tunnel because you're work, working your extensors and flexors. Mostly you just work flexors. You're just pulling tight. And then when you add in the finger roll between the pinky finger and the first three fingers, now you're working your extensors because you have both the way your body works. If you only do push-ups and never do pulling motions, your chest gets so strong, it rolls everything forward and you get neck pain and headaches really bad. The same is true if you do nothing but bicep curls and these muscles get really big and you never work the back of the arm with tricep push-ups, then you walk around like this. <laughs> You've seen those guys, right? Um, and it's just, it's just different, right? All right. Three finger roll back of the hand and into here. Three finger roll. The first three come together. The thumb takes it. it goes slow motion. There it is. And then weave this all together. Here comes your freestyle. I want you to start to move back and forth again. Go into your figure eight hand to hand. And then when you're ready, add a wrist roll. And then go back into your hand to hand. And when you're ready, add a finger roll. Wrist roll. Finger roll. And then, so facing you, it would look like this. I can do finger rolls. Wait a minute, I missed one. You can do my finger roll here and do a wrist roll here. A little bit slower, two, three, three fingers together over the back of the hand, wrist roll, wrist roll, one, two, there it is, and start to put those together. And then move faster, get out of your comfort zone, start to drop it a little bit because you're going super fast, add in some of those behind the back spins, whip it up, go over the head, go back behind your back, come around, throw in a wrist roll. Thank you so much. I appreciate that you guys let me know that you're learning things from this channel. I I learned these over a period of I don't know, 30, 40 years probably, right? And I've had many, many great instructors. And the best instructors are the ones who just are passionate about it and they keep it simple, right? Just focus on the basics. And if you look at any martial arts movie, you'll see that all the movies are based on basic stuff. Yeah, 30, I started when I was nine officially in martial arts, but I've been spinning a staff, like you said, since I was five, five or six, because I used to go painting with my father, starting at four years old, 
you painted big apartment complexes, lots of apartments, and I would, I, I do tw no more, I don't have time for more than 10 minutes a day, but you don't need more than that, that's the key. 30 seconds here, 30 seconds the other hand, that gives you strength. 30 seconds hand to hand, that gives you the transfer. 30 seconds wrist rolls, that gives you the balance. And then, we haven't done this yet, strike 30 seconds. Because I also want you to know how to defend yourself. Get behind your staff, point your thumb, thrust. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, strike, strike, strike. 30 seconds blocking. Five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, that's what you work on. But always start with a good warm up. You need that strength, you need the, the blood to get in there, stay safe from the workout, safe from injury, get that lubrication going, get that going. And then some basic spins from hand to hand, that's a good one. I like to do that every single day if I only had time. You only have uh, five, 10 minutes a day, overhead, behind the back, because get, we never do anything behind our back, right? Learn how to sense where the staff is. Sense it, don't see it. Learn how to sense it. And that proprioception is developed. That sixth sense comes from when you start to create an extension of yourself through the staff. This becomes part of you. And then a basic strike. This is as basic as it gets. Like you're doing push-ups, striking to the temple, striking to the knee, striking to the ribs. That's all that is. 30 seconds here, hard and fast. And you'll get some bruises on your arms the first couple times. Good. Um, and then 30 seconds like high block, low block, up, down. Lock the arms out. Get as strong as you can, pushing, pushing. Yes, I like to do a lot of the same because again, it comes down to basics. And then change your hand grip. Practice thrusting, striking down at that angle. Thrust, angle, punching across, like a uh, hook punch to the jaw, right? So you have thrust, strike, strike. You can do that strike down and that strike down. But practice those basics before you're done. Yeah, it's part of your soul. It will become part of your soul. And the basic principle of self-defense, when it comes to this street fight self-defense, against the knife attack, it doesn't bleed. There's no knife that's going to cut this in half. Maybe if they had a machete and it comes a little bit faster, yes, you know, uh, that it might cut my rattan staff. But if I know what I'm doing, I'm not going to block the, the blade of the staff. I'm going to, as that blade comes down, here's the blade, I'm going to knock it off of the center line with a spiraling block. And I'll show you all that. That's that, that motion, this motion, adding the backhand in, becomes stronger and faster. And that's the purpose of all spirals in martial arts anyway. You don't block the sword, you either block the hand that's carrying the sword or the knife. But the nice thing about this, if I'm on the street, minding my own business, I'm walking with my walking stick, my walking staff, it's not a, met, a weapon, it's a walking stick, and then I have to create distance, he's gotta get around that length. I go straight in. I'm not doing any fancy spins at that point. For self-defense, I get behind it, I point it at you, and then I come in. If it happens to be in my back hand, I bring it up this way, and then I have that as an attack. Yeah, hiking staff, perfect, right? You get your hiking staff. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. It's in your hand, they catch you off guard. You're here. You can bring it through with a deflecting strike. You can just bring it straight in this way. You can bring it up and block, block, strike, strike, down. There's so many basic things that you can do. This is why I love the walking stick or the walking, the hiking staff or the martial arts staff, the bow, the joe, whatever it is. Whether it's silam, it can be the silam bomb staff, it can be the jangbong from the Korean, Korean want to call it the jangbong, the long staff. Maybe it's, and I know bow staff means staff staff, but we say the bow, long martial arts stick, martial arts staff, jangbong, gun, Chinese, um, bang, Chinese, whatever it's called. It's just a big piece of wood, or in some cases I have the metal, I have the plastic, and hard plastic, unbreakable. But whatever it is, it gives you distance, right? It gives you striking power, it's leverage. You increase speed and power because of the length away from your body. You need a lot of length, you have this length. You have this kind of a strike. 
you have this kind of a strike. You can switch positions. You can come up under the chin, down on top of the head, all for self-defense. It's extremely effective. But with, with, with whatever you've got, even if it's a broomstick, even if it's a Swiffer, sometimes people say, I have an old Swiffer stick. Practice. Remember what I said at the beginning? Invest your time before you invest your money. If you're ready to buy some staffs, go to the staff link below. I put a st uh, staff store in there. Go get some uh, official, whatever that is, martial arts staff. But until then, practice what you have. Don't wait to start. Pick up a stick, any stick, and start to spin it. Start to practice striking. Start to learn how to block and move things through space and time. Get behind your back. Get up over your head. Go through some wrist rolls and some finger rolls. And then if you want to go down and pop it up, catch it in the air. If I had a higher ceiling, I'll show you that one. When we get outside, we'll show that one. So thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Check those links below. For those of you who are on my Patreons, I say thank you so much for the Patreons. And um, go to my website. I don't know the, the world that we live in right now. And this is just my personal opinion. I'm probably wrong. I'm often wrong, right? But I'm never in doubt. Um, my ability to reach you through these social media platforms could change for arbitrary reasons completely outside of my control. We see that. Some people lose their platform or they change the algorithm or whatever it is. But if you go to Pasquinelli.com, perfect. Yeah, use that. PVC is great. I was using one in the gym the other day. It was a PVC pipe and it was weighted because they use it to stretch, I guess. Um, but it's great. But go to Pasquinelli.com, sign up for the newsletter or send me a message. Either way, you're gonna get on the newsletter and let's get in, in contact. Let's make a more direct connection because if I lose one of these platforms, we can't work out together. And so it's as simple as that. I wanna grow that mailing list and I'm gonna send out, I'm constantly sending out old videos, videos that you probably haven't seen, but I think are better than these, right? Less ads, less yapping of my gums and um, more slow motion because I made them when I used more slow motion. And um, I probably have 600 staff videos, 600. I have, uh, I know I have about five or six with the sword. I probably have about 50 to 60 with the nunchucks, uh, the Kung Fu fan, the fighting fan. I have a handful of those. Um, collie sticks, got about a hundred of those. And so I, I, I can pass, I can send those out to you. And then all kinds, what happens when you break your staff, or you don't have it and you have to go hand to hand, close quarter combat. You have to throw a kick or punch an elbow, grab and strike. I have all those videos too. What if you want to just get in shape and get healthy and learn how to get your uh, BMI down and your heart rate up? I'm going to lean out. Um, I've got all those on. Uh, I, I send them out. I just kind of pick them. I go through and I look and I think, oh, yeah, I remember making this six years ago. This was really fun. This has a lot of good information. I really like that workout. Let me put that in this email this week or this month. I send them out maybe two a month. So go, but go to Pasquinelli.com and then send me, you know, do the contact information there. And then look around, there's a bunch of stuff on there already. Uh, oh, Kane, I keep forgetting, Kane self-defense. That's one of my new passions, the Kane self-defense, being able to carry something with you wherever you go that you're allowed to have with you. So there's so much of the Kane self-defense on there and information, not just the videos. Every once in a while, I'll do some writing. I have friends, other martial artists, I ask them to do some writing. I'll put that on the website, pasquinelli.com, but it's also in the emails that I'll send out. So yeah, I love the cane too, uh, especially the new ones I, I have, the new, uh, I have some new canes coming out that are, are kind of like my brand. They're just other canes that we, that I said, I want this feature, I want this feature, and I'll give you a hint, they're all <laughs> less expensive. I, I don't, um, again, I'm all about invest your time before you invest your money. And if you have a lot of money to spend, you want the top of the line, whatever, go for it. I like that too. But I like to, if I could have four or five different options, and each one has a different function, or one really awesome cane, but it's kind of limited. I'd rather have the four or five. So I put those on it too. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's why I don't have earbuds. I have, uh, you know, wait till the, the great discount shopping sale until something's out of um, favor and the new ones come out and then I buy the old one because I, I, this is like, this is good enough for me and I know I'm gonna lose it. So I'm not gonna, I don't want the new $300 earbuds. Give me um, the old Beats has the little string attached for you know 65 bucks but it sounds amazing and i go from nothing to that that's great for me anyway that's my personal philosophy it's probably wrong uh thanks again and
Yeah, you just do this, that, and when you get to the bottom, put the three fingers together, and then turn your thumb, grab it, and pull it through. Uh, you have two choices. Um, get, get a dowel rod. This cost $4.98 at Lowe's. I put a little bit of oil on it and sanded it. Sand it, get rid of the burrs, right? Now from here, I have strikes. I can practice all my strikes, blocks. Practice all my blocks, spins. You're gonna to have to slow down a little bit because it's gonna be lighter, meaning it's gonna move faster. And eventually you'll speed back up. And then when summer comes or spring or Indian summer, it's a nice day, get outside and use your eight foot or six foot staff. The second option, <laughs> squat. Squat just a little bit. So uh, if it's a two, you have two feet to play with. And if you are an average height person, you don't have to be my height, you taller or shorter, but you squat a little bit, your hands are gonna come up and you're gonna be able to do all of the moves. You'll be able to go behind your back. There's stuff back there. And then up over your head without running into the ceiling. If you put your hands up, eight feet is st it's still a lot. That's, that's high. You're not going to be able to touch the ceiling at eight feet, probably. So those are your two options. Use both. If you can't get uh, one of these, look for an old broom and cut the head of it off. Or a sander's pole. That's what I started with, sanding, a sanding pole for all the drywall work that I grew up doing, right? You put the mud on, the drywall, it dries, and then there's a sanding pole. And then later it was a painter's pole because we use big 18 inch rollers and they always screw and unscrew, right? And you have a, a, some uh, guard implement, some tool, unscrew it and use that. Even if it's some cheap plastic or cheap metal, you're not gonna be hitting against anything anyway while you're practicing inside with your spins. So use what you can, either use a shorter version, and then when you're ready to go back to here, it's, this is gonna be second nature because you use the shorter version, or squat a little bit and give yourself the height that you need, and you're not gonna run into the ceiling because of that. And then, you know, if, because you have a lower ceiling, you're gonna to have to pay attention more, that's a good thing. Allow yourself to be super focused and not dig holes in your ceiling that you might have to patch yourself. But those are the two, the two things that occur to me. And somebody else might have another great idea. Put it in the comment section below. I also need lots of comments. You guys can share and comment. If you haven't subscribed already, I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in just a little bit.